Hey class, we got video number three. We're actually going to look at some friction problems this time and kind of see how to actually answer them. So we have a formula here, force friction equals mu, also known as coefficient of friction, but I'm just going to call it mu. It's a lot shorter. And that's kind of usually what you're going to hear from most of the videos or the books, that kind of stuff. But it is our coefficient of friction, that percentage or that decimal that's going to tell us how much, uh, again, it's slowing down, that, that percentage is slowing down. And then force normal, again, what is force normal? It's just that force that's holding something up on a table. It's always usually basically just mass times gravity. Okay? So the problems that I'm going to go through here today, they're not specifically, like, I don't have them written down on any of the problems. But the thing is, I, I've basically taken them right off the practice problem sheet. So if you're looking at friction problems, um, one of the worksheets that I put up in the files, these questions are almost exactly the same. I just changed the numbers just a little bit so they're not exactly the same. But if you follow through that, you'll be able to like, kind of get an idea of where I'm getting these questions from. So question one. In this question, it says that we have a force of 90, so force applied of 20, 20 newtons. So someone is pulling force applied of 20 newtons. All right, so we got force applied 20 newtons. All right, then it says there's a weight, a weight, not a mass, but a weight of 90 newtons. Okay, so we have a weight of 90 newtons. Again, what is weight? It's just how much force is pushing down on this object. So it's basically you're just your mass times your gravity. Now the nice thing is, as I say that, if you notice weight, which is your mass times gravity, is almost always exactly the same as your, your force normal. Force normal is mass times gravity. So they're basically exactly the same thing for now until we get to some angles. Um, but for now, Weight and force normal are always the same. So if you ever see a question that gives you the weight, it's also just the force normal, which is kind of nice. It gives us one of the things already in the question. Uh, and the last thing is it says we have a constant speed. So we have this thing happening here, and there is a constant speed. So we have a constant speed, which is hugely important. It gives us a very important piece of our puzzle. It is asking, what is the mu? So if we are pulling with 20 newtons, and we're at a constant speed, there's no change in acceleration, what is our mu? OK, so we have a force normal. That's not the problem. We're trying to find mu. But we have no force of friction. So how can I, add, like, how can I figure out this problem with no force of friction? If you remember in our last, the last video I made, the introduction to this formula, You'll notice that I mentioned constant speed in a specific point at the end. If we have constant speed, that means our force applied and our force of friction have to be canceling out. They have to be the same because that means there's no acceleration at all. So if I have a force applied of 20 newtons and I have constant speed, that means my force of friction also has to be 20 newtons. It has to be the same because when those cancel out, that means it's going the same speed. It doesn't mean it's stopped means that there's just no acceleration. So whatever speed it's moving at, it's going to continue moving at the same speed. OK? So 20 newtons, 20 newtons. Now we can actually do something that we have a force of friction, which is 20 now. We have force normal, which is 90. So if I put this here, if I go 20 and 90, we can use it just our very simple, let's just divide this by 90, divide this by 90. So how to get mu? 20 divided by 90, which gives me 0.22. OK? And there's no units here which is kind of a weird thing to think of when you talk about like what's the coefficient of friction, there's no, but there's no units. That's just what is slowing it down. It's kind of a ratio or a percentage. And in that sense, we don't need actual units. So the coefficient of friction is 0.22 when we have a question like this. OK, there's question one. I'm going to do three questions in this little video. Question two. I'm going to leave this little setup here. I'm just going to get rid of the actual numbers. But we're going to have a lot of the same setup here. So in this next question, it says we have a mass. I'm going to put mass up here. Mass, 16 kilograms. Something over here as well. Mass, 16 kilograms. And then we're given a mu. We're given a coefficient of friction, 0.35. Yeah. And now it's just going to ask, basically, what is the force of friction on this object? So if I was going to start pulling or pushing on this, what would be the force of friction against me? So what is that force of friction? There's my question mark. 
put in that question mark. I have mu. I don't have force normal yet, so let's find that. How do we find force normal? You're just going to take mass, times it by your 9.8, times it by the gravity. Um, so take this times by 9.8, and we get an answer of 156.8. So now that I have 156.8, that is my force normal. That's my force normal. And we have the coefficient. Cool. So I have that. I have that. All I got to do is just multiply these out. When I go 156.8 times 0 0.35, I get a force of friction of 54.8 newtons. That's how much force this object is going to resist. So let's say, again, yeah, I'm not force friction. Let's say, if, let's say if I pull with 50 newtons, so this object's not moving. We're going to say it's not moving to start off with. It's on the ground. If I pull with 50 newtons, it's less than this 54.8. It's not going to move. Friction is winning. It's not going to move at all. If I pull with 60 newtons, well, now I'm greater than friction. This box or this whatever this object is, it will start moving because I have beaten the force of friction. Okay, so this force of friction is not going to change at all. The mass is there. The coefficient of friction is not going to change. The net force could change depending on how hard I pull. Okay, so there's question number two. Question three, last one. We're actually going to do a question where uh, we have to find an acceleration. So in this question three. It says someone is pulling with a force applied of 60. So let's go over here. Force applied of 60 newtons. Okay, make this arrow a little more even. So there's a force applied of 60 newtons. Let's put that over here. Someone is pulling with 60 newtons. All right. It says that there's a mass of 10 kilograms. Mass 10 kilograms. Mass 10 kilograms. Okay. And it says we have a mu of 0 0.45. That'll stay here. It says what is the net force? Basically, who's winning? What is the net force on this? And then what's the acceleration? Okay. Again, to find acceleration, we're just going to use our other nice little formula. I'll put it above here. Force equals mass times acceleration. That's what you guys did last week a lot. Force equals mass times acceleration. Okay. And for this, this force is always going to be like the net force. Who's winning by how much? So we have our force applied. We just need to find the force of friction over here. So we need to find force of friction. To do that, we want mu and force normal. Well, I have mu. I can find force normal pretty easily. Mass of 10 times by 9.8. I have force normal of 98. Cool. So force normal is 98. To find force of friction, I'm going to take that 98 here, 98, wow, eight's bad, and times it by 0 0.45. Okay, so when I do that, I get a force of friction of 44.1. So my force of friction, 44.1. All right, that's important. So I'm going to put that over here, 44.1. So if I'm pulling with 60 newtons, Force of friction is stopping me by 44.1. What's my net force? My net force, and we can talk about this. Who's winning by how much? Well, my force applied is bigger. So I'm going to go 60 minus 44.1. And I got a net force of 15.9. 15.9. There's my net force. All right. So there's my first step of the question. Ask me first for net force, and then it asks me for acceleration. So I have my net force, which is up here. I have a mass from the very start of the question. I can find my acceleration. Okay, so if I want to go F equals M times A, I have my force, my net force, 15.9 equals mass of 10 times A. So divide by 10, divide by 10. You kind of see what I'm doing here. 15.9 is my force. 10, so divide that out. My acceleration is going to be 1.59. Acceleration equals 1.59 meters per second squared. So I can figure out how fast this object is going to move, even though that the force of friction is there. So now we've got a question kind of using our friction. All right, we have only one more video kind of for this week. I'm going to include a little bit of angle in there and talk about that. But all right, hope this helps. Have a great day, guys.